Welcome back to a new episode of One Wing Span Above, where we discuss anything to do with ground effects. My name is Paul Dutch. We'll cover exciting updates from regions, but first, two new old skimmers. We're diving into a remarkable evolution in ground effect vehicles, a story that bridges decades of engineering curiosity, family legacy, and a relentless pursuit of aerodynamic efficiency. Meet the TW4, a 4 meter ground effect drone prototype, and discover the roots of its design in the pioneering work of Gunther Jörg. To understand the TW4, we need to rewind to the early 1970s in Germany. This was the era when Gunther Jörg, the visionary engineer and a contemporary of Alexander Lippisch and Hanno Fischer, set out to solve the unique challenges of ground effect vehicle design. While most ground effect vehicles of the time relied on a single wing, Jörg introduced a tandem wing configuration, two wings set up behind each other, both contributing to lift and stability. Jörg's designs, known as tandem airfoil flare boats, weren't just theoretical. By 1974, this craft had received official approval as a Type A ground effect vehicle from the German Federal Ministry of Transport. Over 100,000 kilometers of successful testing followed, with vehicles sold as far afield as Japan, South Africa and Greece. The secret source? The tandem wing layout. Unlike conventional aircraft, where the tailplane mainly stabilizes, both wings and the tandem setup generate lift. This not only increases efficiency, but also provides inherent longitudinal stability, a crucial feature for craft flying mere meters above the water surface. Jörg's flare boats could skim above waves with impressive safety and control, and over three decades, he built and tested 15 different tandem airfoil boats in various sizes and materials. Fast forward to today and the Jörg legacy continues. Rainer Jörg, Gunther's son, grew up immersed in this world of experimental aerodynamics. Now he's taken his father's tandem wing concept and reimagined it for the 21st century. The result, the TWE-4, a 4 meter ground effect drone that stays true to the original principles but incorporates modern materials, structural redesign and technical optimization. What sets the TW4 apart isn't just its lineage. Unlike many contemporary ground effect vehicles, which often behave like aircraft and can leave ground effect, the TW4 is designed to remain in ground effect at all times. It self-stabilizes aerodynamically and is controlled over two axes, making it uniquely consistent and safe for its intended low attitude operation. This is a real flying prototype, no CGI, just genuine engineering in action. Let's pause and appreciate why the tandem wing remains such a compelling choice for ground effect vehicles. Both wings generate lift and maximize efficiency and reducing required wingspan. The forward wing deflects air downward, enhancing the ground effect beneath the rear wing. Inherent longitudinal stability means safer, more forgiving handling, especially vital when flying close to the surface. The design offers excellent short takeoff and landing performance, making it practical for a range of environments. The TW4 is not just a drone, it's a stepping stone forward. It's a stepping stone towards a new generation of ground effect vehicles, with ambitions to scale from unmanned prototypes to passenger carrying craft. It stands on the shoulders of Gunther Jörg's decades of research, proving that sometimes the best path forward is to revisit and refine the bold ideas of the past. Stay tuned as we bring you more on the TW4 flight testing, technical breakthroughs and the future of tandem wing innovation right here on One Wingspan Above. We're taking a closer look at a craft that's been quietly making waves in the world of ground effect vehicles, the Aeron M80. While recent discussions around WIC technology often focuses on high profile prototypes and digital concepts, the M80 stands out for its operational track record and real world experience. 
Aaron Flying Ship is based in South Korea and has been working on skin machine development for over 17 years. Their journey began with the M50, a 5 seat model, before moving to the larger M80, which seats 8. Together these craft have reportedly logged over 160,000 kilometers in the past 15 years. A significant figure in a field where many projects never leave the drawing board. The M80 has been in production for about 4 years and has received certifications from both the International Maritime Organization as a Class B WIC craft and South Korea's Ministry of Ocean and Fisheries. These certifications are important as they reflect compliance with established safety and operational standards. The Aaron M80 seats 8 plus crew. It has a 14.5 meters wingspan and travels at 250 km an hour for about 650 km. The construction is out of composite materials for corrosion resistance. All these figures line up with the Flight Ship 8 and the Region C glider. As a Class B wig craft, the M80 is capable of flying both in ground effect and at altitudes up to 150 meters. This dual capability allows it to operate in a wider range of sea conditions and avoid surface obstacles. Unlike many WIG projects that remain in the prototype or demonstration phases, the M80 has been in regular use, including with the Korean Navy, Coast Guard and Customs Authorities. This operational history provides valuable data on reliability, maintenance and real-world performance. The M80's long service history and certification suggest a level of maturity and reliability that are rare in this sector. The Aaron M80 offers a noteworthy example of a ground effect vehicle that has moved beyond the prototype stage and into regular operation. But it also highlights the broader challenges that Wickcraft face in gaining mainstream acceptance. As always, the real test will be how these vehicles perform over time and whether they can carve out a sustainable role in the evolving landscape of maritime and coastal transportation. We go on an in-depth look at the last six months of progress on Regions Viceroy's Sea Glider. From groundbreaking to foiling, here's how far we've come since January. In January 2025, Region kicked off construction at its 24,000 square meters manufacturing facility in Quinsett Business Park, Rhode Island. This will be the world's first dedicated sea glider factory handling everything from component production to final assembly and pre-delivery testing. It's scheduled to come online in mid-2026 and is expected to create a between 300 and 750 jobs backed by more than 4 million in state incentives. In March, Region floated its full-scale crewed prototype named Paladin in Narangaset Bay. This was the first time a 16.7 meter 12-passenger Viceroy was tested with people on board. They confirmed float mode operations and validated critical subsystems like motors, batteries and control electronics. Mike Klinker, Regent's CTO, said stepping aboard felt surreal, a landmark moment signaled the shift from concepts to real-world testing. In April, engineers conducted a dangle test, suspending the craft to calibrate gyros, accelerometers and sensors ahead of foiling. Simultaneously, live radio communications were tested to ensure telemetry and controls were reliable during dynamic maneuvers. Moving into May, tail actuators and control surfaces underwent integration and calibration. This ensures the Z glider can smoothly transition between float and foil modes. Crucially, in March, Region submitted its design basis agreement to the US Ghost Guard. The DBA defines how the Viceroy will meet or exceed safety standards for vessels its size. Final approval is expected mid 2025, paving the way towards full maritime certification. Then, on June 24th, Region's Viceroy achieved first crewed foil mode trials, lifting on hydrofoils 
it is targeting speeds of up to 50 knots or 92 kilometers an hour, making it one of the fastest production hydrofoils by a factor of two. CEO Billy Thalheimer called it a powerful validation of their design and a major step toward crown effect flight. It is really interesting to see the roll stability of the craft. The wings seem to stay so stable and horizontally level. If you look at the hydrofoils, they are essentially T-shaped with not a huge wingspan. They themselves wouldn't add to this kind of stability from their geometry point of view. It looks like there are flaps on the front foils, but I wonder if they only do up and down motion and no roll elements. The foils on the back don't seem to have movable flaps, even though there seems to be a joint line across the span of them. It could be that the whole foil could change angle, as it seems to be the case with a quarter scale model. It seems that a vertical surface is a movable rudder surface, which makes sense as a water rudder on a boat would be on the back of the boat. We can see there are no flaps on the actual wings yet, just on the tail, so there would be no roll control there which it wouldn't be even if the flaps were attached, since the speed of the craft is too low to be effective. That would leave the blown air over the wing from the multiple rotors that could be used to stabilize the craft in the roll motions. Without the flaps though, this would be a tough ask. The control system must do an excellent job of keeping the foils underneath the hull by using the rudder control from the back foil, a bit like SpaceX are keeping their rockets upright by vector controlling the angle of the exhaust. Here is the roadmap ahead for Regent. Summit 2025, ramp up, foil speed, refine, controls. Mid to late 25, attempt first crewed flight in ground effect. 2026-27, Full-scale production begins after certification. With these milestones, Regent is poised to transition the Sea Glider from prototype to commercial development, potentially in as little as 12 to 18 months. For now, thank you for watching. Keep in the loop by hitting the subscribe button, and we'll see you here for the next episode of One Wingspan Above. Keep on skimming.